Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. First things first, next week's video will be the monthly Q&A. So, please post your questions related to martial art, Xiu Dao, and Chinese culture in the comment section or on the Ask Dao Yi channel in the Dao Yi Discord, or email me if you prefer to be anonymous. Also, I'd like to thank all your, our community members who posted many excellent questions, giving me many great opportunities to discuss some very interesting topics. So, thank you all and I look forward to many more. In the last couple of weeks, I introduced the concept of Yao Kua Fen Li, or separation of the waist and the hip in Tai Chi and Xing Yi. Today, I will do the same for Ba Gua. Yao Kua Fen Li is much more obvious in practice in Ba Gua compared to Tai Chi and Xing Yi. Of course, the concepts and the principles introduced in Tai Chi and Xing Yi are also applicable to Ba Gua. What I will present in this video will focus on the unique approach of Yao Kua Fen Li in Ba Gua. But first, let's warm up with Dao De Jing commentary and Xiu Dao. In last week's video, I briefly introduced the historical information about Dao De Jing, the Book of Dao. Starting today, I will introduce a couple of key concepts from Dao De Jing at the beginning of each video and comment on them in the context of Xiu Dao practice. I hope you will enjoy this part. The quotes for today, the first two sentences of chapter 1, Dao Ke Dao Fei Chang Dao, Ming Ke Ming Fei Chang Ming. Dao, as a noun, is commonly translated to principle, path, or way. Actually, since it is a philosophical term, we should just use the term Dao without any translation. Ke means can be. Dao, the third word, is the same character as the first one, the Dao, but has a different meaning. This Dao means speak, describe, talk about. Fei means not. Chang means eternal, immutable, everlasting. Well, the final word Dao, spelled the same as the previous two, has a subtle difference from the very first. It actually means Dao. For the second sentence, Ming means the name, Ke means can be. The next word Ming is the same character as the word name, but here means to name, to call, to call. The words Fei and Chang used here are the same as in the first sentence, which means it's not the everlasting. So, the translation for these two sentences is, the Tao that can be spoken is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. These two sentences, as the first two sentences of Lao Tzu's work, reveal the fundamentals of Chinese philosophy, the concept of Tao. As the core of Lao Tzu's philosophy, the concept of Tao is the theme that pervades his entire philosophical system. So, what is Tao? There are a few meanings of this term in his book. They are first, the origin of the world, second, the driving force of the development of the world, third, the principle of all entities in the world, and four, the principle of human behavior or virtue or de the term used by Lao Tzu in his book. So, according to Lao Tzu, anything in the world is the result of Tao. Here, 
Lao Tzu introduced the concept of Dao, the eternal Dao, a philosophical concept that exists in the universe but cannot be explained and named. It is worth noting that the usage of the word Chang, which means eternal and everlasting, does not mean here that Dao does not change. Eternal and everlasting should not be translated as never change. In many commentaries, this word is translated to Sui Shi Bian Yi Nai Chang Dao Ye, or changes according to the situations is the eternal Dao. This concept will be elaborated on in chapter 25th and 40th. <clears throat> now, let's talk about the relationship between these two sentences in the context of Xiu Dao. In Dao's energy practice, Dao is an empty state and it generates Yi Qi or one energy. Pay attention to the word Qi here. It is not the word Qi or energy that we use in Qigong, Chinese medicine, or any other activities in our daily life. This concept has been introduced in many of my prior Xiu Dao videos. This concept is expressed by this character Qi, a character that is only used in Taoist energy practice, Taoist meditation or Xiu Dao practice, meaning to refine the energy in the emptiness. Please watch my videos in the Xiu Dao playlist, the link is in the description. So, in Xiu Dao practice, Dao is the entity that creates the Yi Qi or the primordial energy, or Jin Dan, the golden elixir. In Xiu Dao history, many scholars have called Jin Dan the word Dao. For example, the book Xing Ming Gui Zhi, The Principle of a National Life, says, quote, Dao Zhe Guo He Wei Ye Yi Yan Yi Ding Ye Yue Qi Ye, end quote. Translation, what is the Dao? If defining it in one word, it is Qi. End translation. Again, the word Qi here is not the character Qi, but it is the character Qi. The word describes the process to refine the primordial energy, which cannot be defined in a worldly way or the post-mordial process. This is the explanation of the first two sentences of Dao De Jing in Xiu Dao practice. With that, let's move on to today's main topic, Yao Kua Fen Li in Ba Gua practice. Topics covered in today's video include first, review of Yao Kua Fen Li, second, Ba Gua body structure and Yao Kua Fen Li. Third, Ba Gua practice of Yao Kua Fen Li. Fourth, principles of Yao Kua Fen Li. Fifth, misperception. Sixth, demonstration. And seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. Topic 1 Review of Yao Kua Fen Li. In the last couple of weeks, I introduced the concept of Yao Kua Fen Li in Xing Yi and Tai Chi. Yao means waist, Kua means hip, and Fen Li means separation. Put it together, it means the separation of the waist and the hip. The physical area of the waist and the hip areas in the body should be clearly understood so that they will be practiced correctly according to their natural structure, function, and the power generation mechanism. The reason for this misunderstanding of the waist and the hip is mainly due to the translation issues between the old and the modern Chinese languages since in the old Chinese language, yao or waist means 
the area that includes the waist and the hip. Well, in modern Chinese language, Yao means only the waist. I also mentioned that the objective of this approach is to integrate the waist and the hip as one, since the waist and the hip areas together make up the most important body area in terms of power generation. Any martial art practice requires power and this area is the source of power according to the traditional internal style concept. Managing this area, traditionally called the lower dante area, is actually a key practice. I also talked about Yao Kua or no differentiation between the waist and the hip, a common mistake in dealing with this area. Furthermore, I emphasized in prior videos that without proper training, the traditionally called lower dantian area will be stiff. As a result, you will find your movements to be much slower and lacking sufficient martial flexibility to quickly generate martial power in self-defense situations. Yao Kua Fen Li, or the separation of the waist and the hip, is one of the solutions to correct this problem. So, identifying a practice issue, determining the reason behind it, and successfully resolving it, for example, with Yao Kua Fen Li, are all important steps in practice. So, what exactly is Yao Kua Fen Li in Ba Gua? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 2 Ba Gua Body Structure and Yao Kua Fen Li. Any style has its unique body structure. That is the most important factor that differentiates a martial art style from the others in the Chinese martial art community. A distinctive style is not only defined by its unique movements, but more importantly, it also relies on its unique body structure, which is the foundation for its martial power generation mechanisms. Following with, it would not be considered a distinctive style, or at the very least, it would be hard to consider it a well-developed style. As mentioned earlier, Bagua is a style with a body structure that makes the experience of the Yao Kua Fen Li concept a lot more obvious in both static and dynamic states. We all know that in Bagua circular pattern stepping, which is the most popular Bagua stepping method, the upper body turns toward the center of the circle. I'd like to explain this concept based on this iconic Bagua body structure. In any Bagua practice, no matter what style or branch, the typical body structure in terms of turning motion is that the upper body turns toward the center of the circle. So, what is the exact area where the body starts to turn away from the body center line? Does the turning begin from the hips? Well, the outward turning motion of the upper body starts from the waist. Let me explain using the Cheng style Bagua most commonly used body posture and movement, Qing Long Tan Zhua, or the black dragon extends its claws as an example. Let's say the left hand extends toward the circle while the right hand is under the left elbow. When we walk along a circle to the left of the body, the upper body starts turned toward the left side, following the standard Cheng style stepping method. The left foot steps slightly straight 
while the right foot slightly turns inward. This is the typical traditional Cheng style circle walking posture. To maintain a solid body structure and smooth yet stable stepping, the waist and the hip, especially on the left side, have to follow the Yao Kua Fen Lin principle, or else your upper body will become either stiff or sloppy, and your stepping will also not be stable. The center pushing posture made of the palm is actually achieved through the turning of the waist while the hip maintains the forward walking structure. This is an example of a natural posture situation. So, how about the lower posture Bagua circle walking pattern? Do the waist and the hip still follow the same principle as Yao Kua Fen Li? Yes, definitely. Even in a low posture stance, for example, when the distance between feet is more than twice the shoulder width, the same principle applies, or else the stance will not be stable and solid. To summarize, no matter whether a high posture or low posture, Bagua practice requires the separation of the waist and the hip in the upper body turning movement. That is the very source of Bagua power and also the fundamental Bagua body structure, which requires the waist and the hip to follow the Yao Kua Fen Li principle. Now, let's look at how to actually practice Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua stepping in the next topic. Topic 3. Bagua Practice of Yao Kua Fen Li Following the same example from the last section, let me elaborate on how to practice Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua. I will use the same circle walking posture. So, the left hip should point forward since the hip should guide the stepping direction, while the left waist turns to the left side. At the same time, our right hip has a slight turning motion toward the left side or toward the circle, while the right waist follows the direction of the right hip. In other words, the left hip leads the stepping movement, while the right hip leads the right waist. Pay attention here that the left hip does not lead the left waist. Now, the question becomes, which body part leads the left waist? It's actually the Ming Men area or the lower back area and the right waist that lead the turning motion of the left waist, not the left hip. A traditional Bagua proverb, Sun Yao Chen Kua, talks about this turning. Sun Yao means to relax the waist and the Chen Kua means sink the hip. Relaxing the waist actually means the relaxed state of the left waist, and the sinking the hip means that the hips sink not only downward but more importantly towards the left foot while it steps forward. That is the meaning of this popular Bagua proverb in explaining the motion of the left hip and the left waist. Of course, the right waist should also be relaxed, but compared to the left waist, it is in a more strengthened state. This is a very subtle practice and I hope you will pause this video and give it a try. You will notice the different levels of strength between the left hip and the right waist. That is the required body structure in the Cheng style practice. So far, I have used the Qing Long Tan Ra movement, or the Black Dragon extends its claws. This is an 
opening body structure in terms of the main palm or the left palm. So, how about the Bi Men Yan Zhou movement? The elbow blocking as door closing movement. A Bagua movement as popular as the Qing Long Tan Zhua. Now, let me explain the Yao Kua Fen Li in this type of closed body structure compared to the open body structure. To practice this movement, the left upper chest leads the inward turning motion of the waist, while the right waist maintains its initial posture. The left hip still points toward without any turning inward. The right waist turns inward or toward the center line and the right hip leads the turning motion of the right waist and also turns inward. In other words, the left waist is controlled by the upper chest and the lower back area or the Mingmen area. So, the left waist is still relaxed, but the right waist has slightly more strength compared to the left waist. You may find this hard to keep track of with words alone. So, please pause this video, give it a try, and focus on both sides of the waist and the hips. The above analysis pretends the historical body turning practice. There are many other types of body turning as well in Bagua practice. For example, diagonal body turning is the must have in order to have a vertical Bagua power, which requires a more complex body turning structure and the movement. So, sometimes the turning is controlled by the hip. Well, some other times it's controlled by the waist. All these practices are caused by the nature of a Bagua movement. Bagua turning requests the body to have a three dimensional turning most of the time, which requests the practitioner to analyze each type of a Bagua movement carefully in order to practice that style at an advanced level. These are the basic practices of the application of the Yao Kua Fen Li concept in Bagua practice in terms of body structure and body movement. A unique style requires a unique approach to dealing with the relationship between the waist and the hip. All of these discussions aim for developing Bagua's martial power. No matter what style of Bagua you practice, Developing Bagua martial power is definitely the objective of the training. Bagua's martial application is based on its martial power. No application of a Bagua movement will work well without its martial power. So far, I have used two typical Bagua movements to explain the practice of the waist and the hip in detail. This is an effective and efficient method to elaborate on an abstract concept, especially a movement involving multiple body parts moving simultaneously. Now, let us look at some important principles to further elaborate on Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua practice in the next topic. Topic 4 Principles of Yao Kua Fen Li Yao Kua Fen Li itself can be considered both a principle and a practice. Further explanation of this principle can deepen your general understanding of it. Also, I have introduced a few principles of Yao Kua Fen Li in both Tai Chi and Xing Yi in the last two weeks' videos. Principles introduced in those two videos can largely also be applied to Bagua practice. At the same time, Bagua's unique body structure requires some additional specific principles for better practice, or else you may not notice the advantages of the obvious waist turning posture based style. So, let me introduce three of them in today's video, all my own creations. They are first, 
，先定胯后转腰。First fix the hip position, then turn the waist. Second, 腰力下达于胯。The power of the waist arrives to the hip, and third, 内松外紧命门撑 The inner side of the waist relaxes while the outer side tenses, and the 命门 area pushes outward. Let's explain them one by one. First, 先定胯后转腰 Fix the hip first, then turn the waist. The overall principle of dealing with the waist and the hip is to let the hip lead the waist shifting or stepping movement, which has been explained in the same principle used in the Tai Chi video. However, this proverb goes one step further. It mainly focuses on the bagua turning motion. For example. When the Qinglong Tanjua movement changes to the Ye Di Changhua movement, or the Blue Dragon extend claws to the flower under the leaf, the left hip stabilizes first, and then the right hip turns towards the right hip. Then the left waist turns around the left hip. So. This proverb emphasizes the practice that the inside hip fixed first, when the outside waist turns and closed toward it, which is different from the Tai Chi principle I introduced two weeks ago. Second, 腰力下达于胯 the power of the waist arrives at the hip. This proverb emphasizes the practice that. The waist should have sinking energy, and that sinking energy should sink toward the hip. Yes, the main function of the waist in the bagua movement is to turn. However, in order to ensure the stability of a bagua turning while being able to generate strong martial power. The energy should sink downward, and the sinking energy should reach the hip. In other words, hips control the direction of a movement, but the energy generated by the turning hip should aim to reach the supportive energy created by the other hip. It is a dynamically managed and executed power, which should be experienced through practice. Furthermore, this kind of winding power is for power release, which is usually the following movement. In Chinese martial art practice, one movement is always for the application of the next one. For example. Winding movement is for the following extending movement. If we practice the winding movement to be for defense and the extending movement for an attack, so the winding energy created by the winding movement of both the outer side of the waist and the inside of the hip is an example of it. And the, the proverb. The power of the waist arrives at the hip. Just explain this movement. Going forward, when you practice bagua circle walking, especially in slow motion practice, sending the power from the waist to the hip should be an important practical aspect and should require special attention. Third, 内松外紧命门撑 The inside of the waist relaxes, the outer side tenses, and the Mingmen area pushes outward. This proverb emphasizes the Bagua body structure in terms of the tension on the waist area. If we take the left side of Qinglong Tanjua's posture as an example, the inner side of the waist refers to the left waist since it is close to the Virtual bagua circle. This side of the waist should be relaxed. At the same time, the other side of the waist or the right waist should maintain a comparatively tense structure. And more importantly, 
the lower back area of the Ming Men area should extend outward slightly. The term outward pushing motion of the Ming Men area actually means that the Ming Men extends backward. Between the three areas, the inner side, the outer side of the waist, and the Ming Men area, the Ming Men area has the most strength. This is the result of taking advantage of our natural body structure in power distribution. So, relax the inner side of the waist when you practice circle walking in Bagua, but strengthen the outer side and the lower back area. That is the key aspect to maintaining a solid and a strong Bagua Dantian practice especially in an open posture, which I have introduced in the previous section of this video. Now, how about a closed posture in Bagua circle walking? For example, Qinglong Tanjua's posture changed to Ye Di Changhua's posture. Well, the inner side of the waist should have more strength than the outer side of the right side of the waist. So, in the closing body structure, which has also been defined previously in this video, the inner waist maintains more strength. An opposite body structure in terms of power distribution compared to the opening body structure. This subtle change in the strength level between different body structures in Bagua practice actually can make a big difference in the result of your practice with time. Again, this is an advanced and a subtle practice, which requires some effort to master. To summarize, I only introduced three important Bagua principles to illustrate the importance of why and how to practice the Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua circle walking in both opening and closing states. Now, let's look at a very common misperception in the next topic. Topic 5. Misperception Any concept, upon reaching an abstract level, will most likely be misunderstood due to the nature of martial art practice, and the Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua is no exception. One very common misperception of this concept is that Bagua practice is about the circular movement of the palm and the middle Dantian movement, since the Bagua palm moves horizontally a lot. Let me debunk this misperception today. Yes, it is true that in Bagua practice, there are a lot of horizontal movements made by the palms, such as Heng Kai Zhang or horizontal striking palm, and so on. Those movements mainly are managed by the opening and closing motion of the chest or the middle Dantian area. However, mere opening and closing movements made by the chest are not as powerful as those made by the lower Dantian, or the waist and the hip. The circular movements made by the chest actually also include the waist and the hip, playing the same role of generating the most power in the turning motion or else it will result in the middle Dantian movement becoming sloppy. Furthermore, most of the horizontal circular movements are intended for blocking income attacks, not meant to have a strong striking power compared to the upward and the downward Bagua movements. Also, a horizontal movement will normally be followed by a downward strike, which requires power from the lower Dantian. So, overemphasizing the function of the middle Dantian because the horizontal circular movements mainly rely on it is a mistake. Topic 6. Demonstration I'd like to demonstrate a bagu exercise that 
allele trace the coordination between the waist and the hip in a slow motion practice. It is the second big palm of a Cheng style bagua. The name of the movement is Shuang Huan Zhang or Double Changing Palm. The second palm. Topic 7 Takeaways First, review of Yao Hua Fen Li. As explained in the previous two videos about Yao Hua Fen Li, translation issues are caused by the different meanings of the ancient and the modern word Yao or Waste. We have to correctly manage the different practices between the waist and the hip in Bagua practice in order to have a solid flexible but powerful martial power. Second, Bagua body structure and Yao Hua Fen Li. Bagua practice requires the separation of the waist and the hip in the upper body turning movement. That is the very source of Bagua power and also the fundamental Bagua body structure, which requires the waist and the hip to follow the Yao Hua Fen Li practice. Third, Bagua practice of Yao Hua Fen Li. A practitioner has to differentiate the function of the waist and the hip in Bagua stepping, especially in a power releasing movement. Even though the hip is usually practiced to lead the fourth direction, it needs to coordinate with the waist correctly in different martial postures which requires adjusting the strength level of the hip and the waist accordingly. Fourth, Principles of Yao Kua Fen Li First, Xian Ding Kua Hou Zhuan Yao fix the hip position first, then turn the waist. Second, Yao Li Xia Da Yu Kua The power of the waist arrives at the hip. Third, Nei Song Wai Jin Ming Men Cheng the inner side of the waist relaxes, the outer side tenses, and the Ming Men area pushes outward. Fifth misperception A common misperception is that Bagua practice is about the circular movement of the palm and the middle Dantian movement, since the Bagua palm moves horizontally a lot. Remember, this is a misperception. The waist and the hip are involved in power generation even in horizontal movements. Make sure to check out the demonstration section for a visual idea of Yao Kua Fen Li in Bagua practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Quick reminder to send me your questions for the next week's Q&A video. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and enjoy your practice.